23-24. Right Honorable Speaker, these have necessitated preparation of supplementary schedule number three for financial year 2023-24, amounting to Uganda shillings 288.634 billion. Accordingly, my ministry sought approval of cabinet during sitting on Monday 13th, 2024. I now give the details. Under vote 008, Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development, an amount of Uganda shillings 132.634 billion, an equivalent of United States dollars 34 million. This is funding for Uganda National Oil Company needed for additional equity acquisition in East African crude oil pipeline to meet the cash call arising from delayed financial close by the financiers. This is required before 1st of July 2024 in order to meet the funding obligations in the ECO project. This funding will be accessed from the Petroleum Fund in line with Section 59.3 of the Public Finance Management Act 2015, which states that for avoidance of doubt, the petroleum revenue shall be used for financing of, of infrastructure and development projects of government and not the recurrent budget. Under vote 151, Uganda Blood Transfusion Services, Uganda shillings 2.5 billion is required to meet the shortfall in the operational budget for the Uganda Blood Transfusion Services for blood collection, processing and distribution for this quarter. This will be funded using savings from the wage after the audit of the wage bill. Under vote 166, National Council of Sports, Uganda shillings 152 billion is required as 30% advance payment for the construction of Hoima City Stadium in preparation for AFCON 2027. This funding will enable the contractor MS Suma commence on construction of the stadium to be ready before the deadline of 31st December 2025, required by Confederation of African Football, CAF, for Uganda to co-host the 2027 Africa Cup of Nations. Under vote 514, Uganda Embassy in Geneva, Uganda shillings 1.49 billion is required to address the funding shortfall arising from the loss of poundage and increased schedule on account of Uganda's assumption of chairmanship of non-aligned movement NAM. The mission requires funds for accumulated use on rent, salaries, medical insurance, and utilities. These needs, this needs to be settled by the end of financial year to avoid legal action from landlords, service providers, and contract staff. This will be funded using savings from wages after the audit of the wage bill. How, do we, how are we going to finance this supplementary schedule three? One, we shall use savings from the wage amounting 3.990 billion. And two, we shall transfer funds from petroleum fund amounting to 284.634 billion. Ma Madam Speaker, our petroleum fund account currently has 400 billion. I propose to utilize Uganda shillings 284.634 billion in line with Section 59.3 of the P Public Finance Management Act 2015 to finance the acquisition of equity in East African crude oil pipeline and construction of Hoima City Stadium. Right Honorable Speaker, Section 58A of the Public Finance Management Act 
states that withdrawals from the consolidated fund, withdrawals from the consolidated fund shall only be made under authority granted by an appropriation act and a warrant of the Auditor General to the consolidated fund to support the annual budget. Madam Speaker, with this justification, I appeal to the House to consider and pass the supplementary schedule number three so that we are able to finance these critical needs which cannot wait for the next budget in July. I submit right honorable. Honorable members, honorable members, let's get from him first. Thank you, right honorable speaker. Shadow, you will speak. Okay. Madam Speaker, you called for the next item on our order paper. That next item is a laying of paper, which is item number three. There are two papers to be laid. The first one is the supplementary expenditure schedule number three, which I guess has been laid. The second one is the corrigendum to the national budget estimate. Midway the processing of this item, the Honorable Tinka Simire raised the matter he didn't even allow completion of this item. There is absolutely nothing that stops a parliament from handling and suspending rules to handle business. It has been done before, but it can be done neatly. First of all, Madam Speaker, as you rule, this supplementary is supplementary of government. Government has ministers here. How many are they? Senior ministers, including the Attorney General. In the past, by the practice of this house, the person who understands the urgency of a matter is laying, is government, the one who is laying it. It cannot be a volunteer to think that this is very urgent on behalf of government and therefore rules should be suspended. <laughs> I therefore, Madam Speaker, I therefore, Madam Speaker, would like to ask you to guide. First, we deal with the laying of the papers as it is in in the item that you called. But two, after they have laid, they can be the ones to express the urgency that this matter is urgent. And then we listen to them. But to get Thank volunteers you. to do their work, that Thank would be too you. much. Thank you. Uh, Honorable. And our issue, especially from this side, to which now I speak for, we reject increment of taxes, 100 on petroleum and 100 on diesel. Because if I do a recap, we are collecting 140, 1,450. That is under close what? Um, that's why I was seeking your permission. We will, we will come to that, because, Madam Speaker. It was not ordinary, but I, I thought you were allowed to... What I was to... saying, we are now in which clause? We hadn't started. That's why I'm taking advantage with your permission to, to remind at least uh, my side. So the one that is here to vote, they don't need to be reminded. <laughs> from... from, from uh, Honorable, why don't we move clause by clause? When we reach that clause, you raise that issue. Clause one... Clause one it has been moved by the minister. I want to register my opposition to this motion. Madam Speaker, let me start with the, what the Auditor General said. The Auditor General, in his, the Auditor General, The Auditor General, now maybe I, I, 
the auditor general madam speaker and i don't know if uh, government ministers read the rules the rules don't allow walking as if you are in a kiraro all the time invading the speaker because we need the attention of the speaker madam speaker honorable sir you General. have my attention i and i can repeat all what you have said may i do multitasking yeah madam i was addressing the ministers because for you you are staying okay in can you continue place. with the opposition but they keep the... walking there Madam Speaker, the, I want to start with the report of the Auditor General. The Auditor General, in his latest report, um, mainly on page 19 to 24, he speaks about supplementary requests. And this is what he said. I want to quote him. Continued approval of supplementary budgets without a corresponding increase in revenue financing could be attributed to fiscal indiscipline, which leads to increased funding gap affecting the earlier budget objectives. So the Auditor General reports, and I will use the year 2022-2023, because his report is on that year. For example, that... Uh, in that financial year, with the supplementary included, the total budget was 52.5 trillion. That's the total budget that you parliament approved with the supplementary. But there was only 43 trillion. That is the financing that was realized at the end of the financial year. You first approved the budget of 48 trillion. Then you had 4.4 trillion in supplementary, making the total budget 52 trillion. But the financing available, money from taxes and borrowing, was actually 43 trillion. What the Auditor General is warning this parliament against is that each time you pass a supplementary here, you give a license to Honorable Musasizi and his group to remove money from items you have approved and use it on their new priorities. That's what the Auditor General is saying. That's point number one. So approve this supplementary knowing that the money you approved earlier, first of all, the funding itself will not be realized because by the end of the third quarter for this financial year, URA had collected just about 20 trillion out of a 29 target, 29 trillion target. If they work so hard, maybe they will make them 23. So what the owner of Musasis will do is to remove money from the area priorities and then fund his new priorities. That's what will happen. So the second point, uh, Madam Speaker, the Budgeting through supplementary, which the Auditor General calls a fiscal indiscipline. People are running this country like a kiosk. That every week, because last week we passed a supplementary here. What has happened in the last 10 days that you did not know that there will be a need to construct a stadium? There will be a need to acquire equity in the, in the pipeline? Because you brought a, a supplementary just 10 days ago, we passed it here. Now you come trafficking another one. One time the late speaker Oranya said if he was in charge, he would have sacked all the ministers. Maybe for me, I would even t send them to Luzira. <laughs> 10 days ago, you brought a supplementary here. Now after 10 days, you come running. Oh, wait, there is another one here. A and you are my ministers. Each one of you will be in Ruzira. That's where the warrant of uh, detention will find you. So, so therefore, Madam Speaker. Yes. I, I, <clears throat> I want finally to go back to the law. The lawyers can help. If you go to <clears throat> section 76, of the public finance, 
that categorizes items for which you can uh, seek a supplementary funding. And uh, no, 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 section 25, 6 and uh, 7. As unforeseeable and uh, unavoidable. I want the planners in the ministry to tell me, when did you win the bid to host AFCON? For you not to have factored the money of AFCON in the budget. And what, what is it going to happen between now? Because this budget that we are going to pass today, hopefully, is a budget that are going to implement in a period of one month. So what is it that you cannot wait that is so urgent that you must fix it in a supplementary. So can I, Madam Speaker, I, I said uh, I want to register my opposition to this motion, and those are the reasons. And these ministers, uh, because you're also ministers of Uganda, these mistakes you make today, when this government has gone, one by one you should walk to Luzira. We'll find you there. Thank you very much, Madam just to just give you specific explanation and then alternatives to yes to, just, just to, to, to raise money just to reassert what i have already said and many members have said we are already charging a tax 1450 on petroleum on petrol charging per liter charging 1,300 on diesel. If we impose another tax, we are going to cause a lot of damage to the economy itself. Because you have transportation of, of almost of everything that you are using. But also, most important, Madam Speaker, we have a budget that has officially been referred to us that is being proposed. These particular taxes, you are looking to raise about 150 billion. But in the budget that you, we are handling, you have 162 billion for donation. Last week, we are donating money to Magora. Really, you need to be sympathetic to taxpayers that for you keep imposing charges one after another. So the proposal is that we do away with the tax on, on petrol and diesel. But also, as I mentioned uh, when I presented the report, this country has a different... I am also going to bring a proposal on the, removal of some expenditure. The, the, <laughs> <clears throat> Madam Speaker, in the report that I presented here, this country has a, a deficit of 2.5 million houses. We should be reducing taxes on building material. You cannot be imposing further taxes. So I, and then drinking water, drinking water. That you, in the government, you want to impose a, ta a further tax on drinking water. So the, the, the proposal, Madam Speaker, is that we recommit and have these matters deleted. Uh, 132 billion. 634 million be provided under vote 008, you, Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development, as a development expenditure and a supplementary expenditure schedule three for financial year 2023-2024. Those in favor say under control and nay. There is have it. Vote 166. National Council of Sports. I put a question that the sum of Uganda shillings, 152 billion, be provided to vote 166 National Council of Sports as development expenditure and a supplementary expenditure, Schedule 3 for financial year 2023-2024. Those in favor say under control and nay. There is have it. Vote 151, Uganda Blood Transfusion Services. I put a question that the sum of 
500 million shillings be provided for vote 151 Uganda blood trans transfusion services as a recurrent non-wage expenditure under the supplement supplementary expenditure schedule 3 for financial year 2023-2024 those in favor say on the contrary nay the eyes have it vote 514 embassy uganda embassy in geneva i put a question that the sum of 1 billion 490 million shillings be provided for under vote 514 uganda embassy in geneva as a recurrent non-wage expenditure and a supplement supplementary expenditure schedule number zero three for financial year 2023-2024. Those in favor say and the contrary nay. Let's have it. Toto. I put a question that a grand total of Uganda shillings, 288,624,000,000 be provided for as a supplementary expenditure schedule number 003 for financial year 2023-2024 those in favor say on the contrary nay there is have it motion for resumption of the house minister madam chair i beg to move a motion that the house do resume and the committee of supply reports there too i put a question that the house resumes and the committee of the supply Reports there too. Those in favor say on the contrary, nay. The eyes have it. Item F, which concerns mineral water, because this will uh, lead to an increment on the price of mineral water, majorly uh, those who sell water in bulk, the 20 liters, uh, the 20 liter canisters. So I, I'm proposing. Pardon? Uh, Chair, on top of what Honorable Semuju suggested, I do suggest we delete part F on mineral water because it's going to make the cost of mineral water, those who sell usually the 20 liter, the bulk water, is going to become quite expensive. Uh, that is the target of this amendment. And then on the proposals, on the proposals of fuel, because uh, chair, the committee agreed and we were together with this, we were with the committee on this, uh, to reject the increment on, keros on, on uh, kerosene. I think that is That's okay. deleted. Yes. Uh, on our proposal to remove the 100 shillings on motor spirit, and that is gas and diesel, I do propose an amendment in Section 8C of the Principal Act to increase uh, item 8F of the Principal Act to increase jet A and aviation fuel by 100 shillings instead of increasing. On, on, on our petrol. But Madam yeah. Speaker, if you, if you allow me to answer directly my colleague. First of all, we have a appropriation that is coming next. In the budget, there are many things that we are proposing when we reach that stage to remove from the budget. A lot of wastage. This particular proposal is going to give you just 200 billion shilling. You can reduce that budget by 6 trillion. Useless things like special drinks and, and, and eat. So there are many things in the budget that we will propose to remove. Actually, we are going to make a lot of more money available. So you don't need this 200 billion shilling. The excise duty amendment bill. 2024 and passed it with amendments. Motion for adoption of the report of the Committee of the Whole House. Honorable Minister. Madam Speaker, I beg to move a motion that the report from the Committee of the Whole House be adopted. I put a question that the report of the Committee of the Whole House be adopted by this House. Those in favor say on the control, nay. The eyes have it. <laughs> Bill's third reading, the Excise Duty Amendment Bill 2024. Clerk, 
Uh, motion to recommit. Uh, at this particular stage, he is confusing us. Why don't you guide the house? Or I, I am praying that you guide the house. You guide the house. We actually delete this entire clause as it is because we are going to cause trouble to Ugandans when we Honourable, allow Honourable members. when we allow the minister to move Honourable. from this house with any form of 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 of, of, of amendment Honourable members. because we it's okay ah. and members listen ah. to this amendment thank first you. listen to my amendment thank you thank you first very listen much listen to my uh, amendment thank you right honorable speaker and uh, what the minister was uh, suggesting would be suicide it would mean we all stop using the ATMs and line up on the bank, in, in lines in the banks, to avoid paying this this bring the amendment. So my amendment, my proposal would be, uh, my proposal would be, or I propose that we amend as follows. Payment of services of withdraw cash provided through payment systems, but does not include withdraw services provided by financial institutions, microfinance deposit taking institutions, and agents of financial institutions, that is agents of banking, will have excluded them. Yes. ...to dissolve itself into a committee of supply to consider supplementary schedule number three for financial year 2023-2024. I beg to move. Would you... Is, is it seconded? Seconded by Honorable Guang Tinka, Mpindi, Lin... Motion in very good faith. That is on procedure. I raised the motion in very good faith. I don't want to frame that I have no idea and, uh, uh, of what the minister presented, but I moved that we move under Rule 151. The committee of the whole house the minister will present to the whole house where members, me, uh, and those who are, are, are disputing are going to be. If you have an opinion, uh, you represent it. So would it, wouldn't it be procedurally right that you, you guide the house? Thank you. Particularly on, on, on this honorable, matter. Honorable. If they are members, they will debate. Honorable, Honorable, Honorable Musa 